So, as advertised in the introduction, I'm Jeff Deby, Wayfinding Planner at TransLink, and I'm here to talk to you today about better wayfinding for transit in Metro Vancouver. You may be familiar with this T symbol, T for transit, that's been popping up on the transit system over the Lower Mainland, and I'm going to give you a little peek behind the scenes at the program uh, behind this, the wayfinding strategy that TransLink's developing. So, what is wayfinding? It's about finding your way. It's navigation. How do you get from A to B? On a transit system, this is mostly done through graphic design, signs, maps, diagrams. Uh, some of the pieces, though, are large scale, like those illuminated T's outside the stations, and are like public art. Uh, in 2008, looking ahead to the Olympics, Translink realized we had some room for improvement. We have this lovely unified transit system, but you wouldn't know it to look at it. A lot of different identities, different qualities and quantities of information across the system. So how could we get better when we welcome the world uh, in a principled approach to uh, a unified multimodal wayfinding system for transit? We wanted a principled approach and I'm going to talk about each of these principles tonight, give you a bit of an illustration. The first one I'm going to talk about is see complex journeys as a series of stages. What does that mean? Well, it means that in any journey, you have like stepping stones. So uh, as a sample journey, you might start off walking to a bus stop and then, then your next step is actually taking that bus trip. Maybe you transfer to another line or to another transit mode, such as SkyTrain. And so on and on until you walk to your final destination. So each of these stages needs to be thought of separately, but the information should be provided seamlessly across all of these stages. So at every step, you need to know, where are you? What transit services are available at this facility? How do I na navigate this facility to get through? So it should be a seamless handover from one end of your trip to the other through all of these stepping stones. One of the ways that you help to do this is to be predictable. So provide this better quality information that we've been envisaging. Our end state is to have this at every station and an exchange in a consistent place so you can depend on it. If you got here through uh, the Canada line at Richmond Brickhouse Station, you would have seen one of these as you got to the bottom of the escalator. Naming the places, naming stations and exchanges. A lot of people are interested in, uh, there's a lot of stakeholders in these. Uh, it's challenging to get right and very hard to change once it's established. Uh, TransLink hasn't always quite hit the mark, but looking forward to the future, we've developed principles that facility names should be simple, logical, durable, and self-locating to make it easier to navigate the system. Transit systems are coded in a number of ways, numbers, symbols, and color, for example. So one of the ways we've tried to make it easier to find your way around the system is to represent our new, relatively new rapid bus B lines with this orange color across a variety of maps and signage. Another important principle is trying to get just the right amount of information. Obviously, if you don't provide enough information, people don't have enough information to make their choices. But you also have to resist the temptation to try and tell people everything. There's information overload. They can't process the amount of information and get just what they need. So how do you go about finding that good middle ground? One of the really important principles that we are holding by for our new strategy is progressive disclosure. So what does that mean? It means give the information at the point people need it. For example, if you get out of a train and there's multiple exits to the station, but they're all the same way, well, at that point, you just say exit this way. It's only at the decision point where you actually have a choice between exits that you would reveal that information. At a bus stop, it might be the size of the graphics. At what distance do you need to know that information? You need a large T for transit from a distance to spot the bus stop. As you get closer, slightly smaller information is what routes stop there. And then once you've confirmed that's right, the actual schedule times. So you're progressing, it as you, you're progressing the information as you get closer. Don't make the writer think. Try and communicate complex information in simple graphic ways. You can use a lot of tools for this. For example, the contrast between color or gray to indicate which direction is ahead or behind you. Uh, a bright red, you are here to help people zoom in on the, uh, the, the important information for them. Another thing is about ensuring information is it has integrity. Make sure the information is there, that it gets changed out regularly, that it's current, and also that people know it's current, they can trust it. Make sure you put effective dates so people can be reassured, oh, this information I'm looking at is valid, I can trust it. Help riders to learn. So another one of these codes that, that we've been uh, developing consistently is a solid versus dashed line on our maps to represent regular service for buses that travel every day, all day, versus limited service for buses that only travel part of the day or part of the week. 
you, once you can explain this to people, then when they see it, they know on the different products, oh, that dashed line, I know what that means, I've already seen it before. Use an appropriate tone of voice. So for, so for when these elements include text, be polite, be simple, direct, helpful, friendly. It may change a little bit depending on whether you're telling people things they're forbidden to do or giving them information about the transit system, but the basic principle of tone of voice holds. You also want to be inclusive for all, so the transit system uh, can welcome many kinds of people. Direct people to elevators if they need them. Make sure that the colors that we choose for maps provide contrast for people with color blindness. Use symbols so that people who maybe aren't familiar with English can help, can, it can help them navigate the system. I talked a little bit earlier about the principle of seamlessness, the seamlessness within the transit system, but we've also been uh, reaching out to municipalities uh, to coordinate with them on their own pedestrian wayfinding programs that are on street to try and develop similar approaches to mapping, labeling, and symbology to make it that handover between the public realm and the transit wayfinding easier. So implementation, as I mentioned, we. Uh, in 2009, started to implement these at key locations to get ready for the Olympics. Afterwards, we did fairly extensive evaluation and some uh, refinement of the designs. And we've been looking forward uh, to cost-effective implementation, mainly trying to piggyback onto new construction or renovations or uh, end-of-life maintenance to uh, install these in a cost-effective way moving forward. So that gives you a little bit of a look behind TransLink's strategy to make it easier to plan and execute uh, transit trips. So thank you. <laughs>